So uh, here we go. Season two is now into double digits, people, for the Trophy Achievement Podcast. Woo! What do we have coming up today? We've got an unexpected hit with a game involving a horrible goose. We also have news on Borderlands 3 and a little bit of controversy regarding the voice acting. GoldenEye64 getting a fan remake. We also have news on Pokemon Go. Careful. We also have news on Pokemon Go and what the latest uh, updates has brought. Um, Sony cutting uh, the PS Now subscription price worldwide. But desperation button, desperation button, desperation button. But will that be for a limited period or will this be permanent? We'll find out soon enough. We've got news on Pokemon Sword and Shield as well. Plus, the battle of the free games. Who has the better free games this month? Is it PlayStation or Xbox? Plus, all the trophies for tomorrow's big release. Because I'm recording this on Thursday. Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breakpoint. All this, plus my latest rental from Boomerang Rentals, right here on the Trophy Achievement Podcast. Jack the Door. If you're looking for a place to go and find some trophies, this is the place to be in the charge of no fees. If you're on Xbox and need some game to score, come over here, I'll help you get some more. My name is Ken Z Retro, the host of the show, gaming news and reviews and all you need to know. Because the weekend is finally here at last, sit back, relax, enjoy the Trophy Achievement Podcast. Hello my fellow Latter Day Saints, Ken Z Retro here, and welcome to episode 10 of the Trophy Achievement Podcast for Season 2, your one-stop shop for all the latest gaming news, rumours, and of course, those sweet points and trophies at the end of the show. Before we get into uh, the news, and of course, the points and trophies, and the battle of the free games as we're into a new month. I mean, Microsoft have already taken this year again. Two years in a row they've done that. So, with me is my guest. Say hi to the people. Hey, what's up guys? Spartan Commander 1990 here, fellow apprentice sinner and chief editor of the Civil Gaming Reviews and of course, and Tails here, Kona Raider of James. Knuckles here, Kona Raider of James. Not you get it, Knuckles. Do you know the way, my father? <laughs> Don't make me hit you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Calm down, Knox. Calm down. Oh, please excuse Knuckles. He can be a bit uh, moody. By the way, Sonic the Hedgehog here, the character you'll be playing as in Sonic Mania. <laughs> and as always, a link to James's DGR blog and Facebook page will be in the description uh, below, alongside links on how you and can... Of, and of, and of, um, of course, my new YouTube channel. I will make sure I get that uh, put into the description as well. And of course, I've also meant, also, of course, guys, uh, let's not forget uh, DJ blog and Facebook page in the description as well, below, as well as ways you can support me on my channel as well. You can follow me on Twitter at Kenzie Retro. You can follow me on Instagram, Kenzie Retro YouTube. I don't post that often on uh, my YouTube Instagram page, but uh, I don't post that often on social media at all because I've uh, because of the the dangers of social media can be being used in a, in a negative way, but I try and use it for a positive way. But anyway, and you can also support me on Patreon as well, patreon.com slash Kenzie Retro, where you'll get early access to this podcast, among many other great rewards. That's a number I'm not interested in. Uh, I suspected that. But nevertheless, what do I have in my hand here? It's my latest rental from Boomerang Rentals. Packages start from as little as three ninety nine a month. Sign up today, get a twenty one day free trial, and you get three free game rentals. The latest game, one of the latest games to be added to the free trial list, is Super Mario Maker Two on the Nintendo Switch, which I've played. It's brilliant, uh, despite the fact I can't really try any other courses because I didn't have a Nintendo Switch online at that point. But I've got it now. But nevertheless, uh, sign up today, get a twenty one day free trial. Three free game rentals. One of those rentals could be Super Mario Maker 2. Or it could be other games that have come out this year. Like Sonic Forces? Uh, no, that was 2017. Sonic, I've warned you about self-promotion. That was t that was 2017. But you could you, it could you could potentially have something like Team Sonic Racing. It could that could be in the free rentals for all we know. <laughs> Sonic! I am. Final warning. 
there, there are no late fees. You can keep the game as long as you like, or you can keep it forever at a discounted price on the Boomerang online store. Once you start renting, you're going to start saving. Boomerangrentals.co.uk, the best place to rent your games. Let's see what I got. I got this yesterday. I got this through yesterday. Ah, okay. It's a game called Control. 505 Games and Remedy Entertainment. The same guys that did the Alan Wake games and uh, Quantum Break, which was in my top 10. Quantum Break, by the way, folks, was in my top 10 games of 2016. And, of course, the makers of Max Payne as well. Before Rockstar took over. So, yeah, that's it. I've not tried this yet. But... We'll give it a bash at some point. I uh, might do a review of it. Um, might do a review of it um, soon. We'll see see what happens. But nevertheless, let's get into the news. Let's all laugh at an industry that never learns anything. Tee hee hee. And of course, that jingle means we've got ourselves our regular gaming screw up of the week. Now, what's happened this week is. Is it EA or is it Activision? Or it could or... be, or could it be someone else entirely? Oh yes, oh yes, the previous one of that i7 processor. <laughs> <laughs> you sold that to CEX, and the transistor was blown. So, um, um, speaking of sales blown, Teddy, take it away. Oh my word, The Apprentice! You'll see that tomorrow. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 you were um, talking about um, Modern Warfare's pre-order? Yeah. Which, yeah, nice segue, by the way. Or should I say, nice segue? Anyway. What do you mean by that? Nice, uh, clever transition. Anyway. Modern Warfare fans are, Modern Warfare fans are cancelling pre-orders over Spec Ops exclusivity. Now, I reported on the Spec Ops exclusivity thing last week on my podcast, where you've got, where the Spec Ops exclusivity, the Spec Ops mode is going to be on PlayStation only for basically an entire year. Which Wait a minute, there's growing over PC? What is this heresy? Not just PC, but Xbox as well, which means by the time the Xbox and PC get the Spec Ops mode, the next Call of Duty game is going to be due for release, making the exclusive to... Making the exclusivity completely pointless! And unsurprisingly, fans have voted with their wallets by cancelling their pre-orders. People have even cancelled their special edition pre-orders. Some of them... Some of the pre-orders amounting to $20. Ouch! Even. Gee. Gee. Uh, tell me this, Kenzie. <laughs> What if, what if this special edition would have had on the Modern Warfare 2 room? I said, oh wait, they tried that with Infinite Warfare. Oh yes, and yet they released Modern Warfare Remastered separately anyway. Making the, co making the combination, again, completely, completely pointless. Man, this is far too satisfying to rip on Activision. Because yeah. it seems to be Activision that are making all the headlines for all the wrong reasons. But nevertheless... Let's have a look at this article from thegamer.com. Publishers often use pre-orders to determine how well their game will perform. So if the cancellation of pre-orders in response to Call of Duty Modern Warfare's PS4 exclusive game mode is any indication, the game won't be doing as well as expected. So, here we go. There are plenty of vocal opponents of many annoying aspects of modern games, but high, num high sales numbers prove that players have, uh, as a whole, have come to tolerate a lot of obnoxious features that modern publishers push on us. For instance, the loot boxes and everything else. So what's about the front? Two. <laughs> they enjoy games that have day one DLC. Fair play. Yeah, uh, EA tried that with Mass Effect 3. But it seems that there's one thing that gamers won't tolerate, is, and that is having your favourite games machine getting stiffed out of an entire game mode. Or... <sighs> yeah, yeah, it's Spec Ops Survival Mode, to be exact. So here we go. Ever since it was revealed that PC and Xbox players would have to wait a whole year to play Call of Duty Modern Warfare Spec Ops Survival Mode, a mode that would be available from day one on PlayStation 4, 
there has been a significant amount, significant amount of backlash. What's more, the backlash seems to actually be affecting Activision's pocketbook. Yeah, and small print here. Um, I, uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to show the screenshots of this, but nevertheless, um, uh, Spec Ops Survival Mode, Play First, Play First on PS, Play PS4. Timed exclusive content until October 1st, 2020. Anyway, while there have been no official numbers released, trusted sources have told our sister site Game Rant that people have been cancelling their pre-orders in response to the news. And the pre-order numbers have been well below expectations for the upcoming reboot of the Modern Warfare franchise. The game's director has said that the exclusivity deal is above our pay grade, so the exclusivity appears to be a high-level decision that's unlikely to be reversed. Hmm. However, if the pushback is strong enough to cause Activision's flagship franchise to underperform, there's a chance that it'll result in a change in policy which will prevent future games from making the same mistake. This isn't the this isn't the first time. This isn't the first time. I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times, and I'll say it again. Proofread these blooming articles. This isn't the first time has learned a financial lesson in... This isn't the first time publishers have learned a financial lesson in their games. The omnipresence of loot boxes in the early builds of Star Wars Battlefront 2, along with its painfully poorly received response to complaints, led to poor sales that prompted DICE to fix the game and make it worth players' time. And yet they still put the loot boxes in a few months later. So, unfortunately, EA's infamous surprise mechanics defense shows that they aren't getting rid of the loot box strategy anytime soon. They've been banned in Belgium! Similarly, there's a good chance that even if Activision learns a lesson from this fiasco, the, prob the lesson probably won't be don't do that, but rather take another approach to doing that. Why am I not surprised? EA never <sighs> learned from their mistakes. Activision never learned from their mistakes. And Ubisoft Blizzard doesn't learn from their mistakes. Is this regarding the other 37 thing? Nope. Or is it regarding something else? World Classic. What happened with that? Well, everyone was looking forward to playing WoW Classic or World of Warcraft. Oh, yes! Forgot that was out. So, basically, this, um, do you know how long it would normally take for you to actually log into the uh, WoW Classic server on release? Over two hours. Ouch! Two hours within the queue to get back into your World of Warcraft Classic World of Warcraft server. And how long did it take them this time? Well, well, this is this time. They've released World of Warcraft Classic, a remastered version of World of, the classic version of World of Warcraft. Well, you know what that means. What? People are going to once again try and go all... Dragons! People, um, there was more than enough people going all... Oh, but unfortunately, and instead of rushing in, they had they were forced to wait in the two-hour queue just to get back into a World of Warcraft, just to revisit those um, classic days of World of Warcraft. Fan flipping tastic. Which I believe was in 2005, 2006. 2004, World of Warcraft was released. What the hell? World of Warcraft's 15 years old. You and me both. But also, but also, um, so yeah, Blizzard haven't learned from their mistakes. Because uh, the mistakes from Diablo 3, they haven't learned in World of Warcraft Classic. EA still refused to learn from their mistakes. They re they refused to acknowledge their mistakes, being more to the point. Uh, Activision refused to acknowledge their mistakes. Uh, Sega does. Sega fails to, to learn from the mistakes. I'll get through that one. 
And uh, also Ubisoft still refused to learn the meaning of the word difficulty. Let's just say less than about it better. But that's not the only backlash that Activision has received this week, because this is article number two on our gaming screw-up of the week. Call of Duty Modern Warfare is under fire by the community. Gee, what are they under fire from this time? Modern Warfare had a successful beta run, however, it seems like the usual problems are surfacing once again. And it has to deal with... Drumroll, please! Loot boxes and supply drops! Why am I not surprised? Call of Duty Modern Warfare has had one of the best betas we've seen so far. The game played great and was well thought of. The gun mechanics also felt great, which is pivotal, of course. There were some changes needed here and there, but overall, it's probably the best beta we have seen from the franchise. Players were hyped with the beta and possibly of a free-to-play battle royale. Oh, for Pete's sake! I don't even want to finish that sentence! Where? Point it out, I'll finish it for you. Free to play. Battle Royale? Battle Royale! Not Ro every game needs a Battle Royale mode, guys! Battle Royale! <laughs> right. Free to play Battle Royale mode makes the game that much more desirable. Well, things were looking good for Activision. Emphasis on were. However, this did not last. First of all, we have seen that the survival mode in Spec Ops will be PS4 exclusive for a year. That means that if you're on PC or Xbox, you will not be able to play this before October 2020. This was not welcomed by players at all. Players from all over the world have started to bombard Activision with questions. In general, Call of Duty games usually has a lifespan of one year. Locking this mode for PS4 was an abysmal choice by Activision. And by the time its survival mode is available to Xbox and PC players, the game will have died down the game will have died down. At the end of the day, players are paying the same amount of money regardless of the platform. This means that PS4 users will have more content for a year for the same price. And this is what some of the backlash was like on social media. Twitter to be exact. Uh, Rain X-Ray YouTuber at Steve4043721. Uh, Activision staying quiet because they know they are gonna bleep us again. Why, man? Why, man, for God's sake, give us one clean year. I'm begging you. You forced me to stop... Blo you forced me to stop Blops 4 because I'm getting wrecked from people with more money. It's a joke. Give us a game that's not a status quo. Yeah, it's basically Control-C, Control-V every single blooming year. But to quote... But to quote uh, that one episode of The Simpsons, yeah, but she's got a new hat. Ah, yes. Yes, and it, it kind of reminds me of a joke that I always say. Activision, they are so concerned of their environment, they even just recycle their own games. Yep. You might as well make it as a games as a service. You might as well make it, make it as a games as a service game. Call of Duty. Call of Duty. Oh, flip. Oh, oh flip. I might have just given them an, I might have just actually given them an idea. <laughs> From Activision. Call of Duty. Yeah. Call of Duty. Subscription Warfare. $49.99 a month. It gives you free DLC. I've just given him an idea. I've just given him an idea of how they can make what more money. What does he do that? Right. Um, Stalewater at Guy Geisen said... They're going to have the same vague bleep like <laughs> um, like we're always thinking about what's best. Like, we're always thinking about what's best for the community without giving a clear answer. LOL. TJ2030 said, Activism just think of how many copies you will sell if you announce right here and now that weapons will not be locked behind supply drops. Uh, Swifts underscore gaming said, I would go pre-order now if they announce that. If not, I will wait till after Christmas. Yeet Bubble or Guru said, same. Supply drops issue. Uh, oh, actually, guys, uh, Swifts Gaming and Guru, here's an idea. Don't buy the game at all. 
Vote with your wallet. Yep. And as it stands, my wallet is nowhere to be in sight. Buy Sonic Mania instead. Anyway, <laughs> supply drops issue. The second thing that made the problem that made the problem was the supply drops. Of course, we got used to microtransactions. We do not question their validity anymore, as every game has it in some form. But the leaks suggested that there are supply drops locked that there are supply drops locked weapons in the game. This changes a AAA game to a pay to win game. Did Activision not learn from Star Wars Battlefront 2? Obviously not. This is not acceptable by the players. Black Ops 4 had the same problem. They put the microtransactions in after the positive reviews came out. This is not the first time they've done this. Gee. No, no, there was a lot of people who was on uh, who was who didn't like that game. Gee, can't imagine why. <laughs> Activision. <laughs> Everything wrong with E3 2014 from GCN, folks. <laughs> uh, even though developers made some remarks regarding these rumors, they did not deny it. Ugh. <laughs> That's what they're doing, shitting themselves in the foot. Yep. And yet they still try to soldier on as if nothing's happened. EA Activision and pretty much every evil corporation in a nutshell. The Gaming Revolution said on Twitter, let's set the record straight regarding microtransactions once and for all, Activision. I know you will see this, and I wish for a quick response for the community. Are there any plans to have weapons that affect gameplay behind supply drops, including after launch in Modern Warfare? If the leaks are misguided, then you should be able to give a point blank no, never answer, right? You have an easy chance here to set the record straight. Let the community know no more ambiguity like we have received what year on year on year. No in Activision, they'll never respond. Players are afraid of the possibility that the after that after the game launches and after the good after good reviews start to come, Activision will launch the supply drop locked weapons. This will be a huge catastrophe. I can make one of the best call call of duty make one of the best Call of Duty games we have seen unplayable. We do not know we do not know what will happen, however, it is also leaked that Activision started to feel the pain after these rumours and gone back to the plan of earnable weapons for now. Plan of earnable weapons for now. They're still going to put the microtransactions in anyway. We do hope that this is true. Fraser, it's Activision we're talking about. It's expected behaviour of them. I just cannot get my head around why they are doing this. I did have a, I did have a, I, I was going to have some news regarding the ESRB rating system, folks, but um, I can't seem to find an article on it. Um, but I'll get into that shortly. Uh, but here we go. Um, yeah, good luck playing Call of Duty Mobile, folks, because uh, the game no longer supports controllers. You, you heard that right, folks. Call of Duty Mobile no longer supports controllers. I'm done. I'm going into front for a drink. <laughs> Mind if I join you? Come on then. <sighs> We're cool now. We're cool. Right, now let's get back to business. <laughs> Ugh, dear. James, you might want to close the door. Where were we? Controller support for Call of Duty Mobile has been removed via an update and is no longer supported according to Activision's customer support team. 
So here we go. Prior to the title's official launch on Tuesday, Call of Duty Mobile controller support was included in the iOS and Android game systems, game settings, leading many to believe that the uh, that ble many, leading many to believe it would be available upon release. However, according to a post on the Activision support Twitter account, the feature was disabled during an update coinciding with the game's launch window. Asked about controller support, an Activision representative tweeted, Unfortunately, this is no longer supported after the most recent update. VGC contacted publisher Activision for comments regarding its plans to offer Call of Duty Mobile controller support on Tuesday, but hadn't received a response at the time of publication. Why am I not surprised? Damage control, damage control. More like... Um, uh, uh, damage control, more like can damage increasing well activision still attempts on damage control to be more to be to be more to the point yeah that works as they as they constantly mash the um the pr button <laughs> yeah Propaganda, why am I not surprised? Anyway, Call of Duty Mobile released on Tuesday in all countries where the App Store and Google Play are supported, with the exceptions of mainland China, Vietnam, and Belgium. How ironic. <laughs> oh, the irony. The oh, irony that is so beautiful. Oh, Call of Duty Belgium. Mobile's banned in Belgium. <laughs> no. No, hi. What are you talking Belgium here? I Activision? A game that uh, a company that supports slip boxes only available in Belgium, the a country that's actually banned them. <laughs> <laughs> My BSC head cannot process the stupid. That is beautiful. That is beautiful to see. Some users initially experienced problems logging into play the free to play game due to an incredibly high volume of traffic. But Activision said these issues were resolved on Tuesday. Developed by Tencent's Timmy's Timber Studio. The game brings together maps, modes, weapons, and characters from across the Call of Duty franchise, including Black Ops, including the Black Ops and Modern Warfare series. Okay. Ross. Call of Duty Mobile is playable on PC via Android emulator Game Loop, which offers mouse and keyboard controls plus exclusive key mapping. Okay then. Alrighty then. I spy loophole. What? I spy loophole. Very easy loophole. Gamers love exploiting loopholes. Until they're patched out of the game. Now, gaming screw up of the week out of the way. Uh. But, um, I was speaking to James now about... Now for the ultimate story of the underdog. Not, Andy. not yet, not yet. I was speaking to James about this earlier. Uh, the fact that the ESRB system is absolutely flawed. I mean, what else is new? But what makes it even more flawed is the fact that the ESRB do not play the games. They make their judgment on the video that's sent to them by the publishers and developers. The video is literally like two minutes long, roughly. This is this is from Angry Joe, by the way, folks. Angry Joe's done his research on this. Angry Joe. Love Angry Joe. Um, and the thing that blew his mind, and mine as well, is the fact that the, e the people that regulate the ESRB, they don't play the games. If you want to make an informed info... Uh, an informed decision on what to rate the game, what you need to do is you need to actually spend time with the games! I know. What's so difficult about that? I mean... Excuse me. A couple of seconds. Uh, where are you going? Uh, I am going to... Right. So. What I've got here is... The box that my copy of F1 2019 Legends Edition, by the way, because I got it, I got the Legends Edition. It came out a few days before the um, 
standard edition of the game. Well, it wasn't a standard edition, it was the anniversary edition of the game, because it's been 10 years since Codemasters started developing these games. And you can see on there, in-app purchases on the box. That is now basically in the regulations now, that you that if the game has in-game purchases, it's got to be stated on the box. But at least here, with this, the the um, the, the um, microtransactions are cosmetic items, liveries for the cars, different uh, different color schemes for your suit, gloves, and helmet. Those are the microtransactions I can live with. Not not weapons or things that change how the game is played. <coughs> Codemasters have paid Activision to Overwatch's way of doing the microtransactions. Minus the loot boxes. You can buy the you can buy the skins outright, or you can buy them in like uh, in like various uh, in various like packages, like like all the multiplayer liveries, or all the helmets, or all the um, gloves, or all the suits, whatever. Those are the microtransactions I can live with. Not loot boxes that EA have dubbed surprise mechanics for some reason. Surprise! You get nothing! You lose! Good day, sir! No, no, even better. Surprise! You got what loot! One of the most characteristic games in the Star Wars franchise. Congratulations! Bat yourself on the back. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I paid 40 bucks for this! <laughs> yeah! Whereas, whereas, oh. whereas in F1, for example, uh, it's a case of, hmm, oh, I like the look of this livery. Let's buy this. Two ninety nine. I can live with that. Let's go. There you go. What's so difficult about that system? Um, can't just write go. Yeah, but they have, but they have game changing weapons. Do no, they don't. Cosmetics only, weapon skins. Oh, now they have cosmetics only. Um, CSGO always had cosmetics only. Ah, okay. Counter terrorists and terrorists may have been different weapons, but then again, it's all down to team tactics, as one unique weapon counters the other, which makes Counter Strike Go more applicable for esports. But then again, the loot, the weapon crates or loot boxes. Only changes the look of the weapons. Okay, that clears that up for me. Now, now that we've got all that out of the way. So, but then again, the weapon cases happened long before Overwatch came into play. Okay, that's fine. Because bear in mind, CSGO came out what year? That would be my HNC, so we're talking about, about four years ago. Four or five years ago. Which was about a couple of, which was about a couple of years before Overwatch came out. And nobody expected Overwatch to blow up as quickly as it did. Same with Rocket League, for example. That was a that was a that was one of the free games in June 2015 on PlayStation. And nobody expected it to blow up as quickly as it did. Yes, but then again, as a matter of fact, you know, you know, you know Psionics? I'm never playing a Psionics game again. Why? Never. They basically... Part of my language, guys. Basically, they prostituted themselves to Epic Games. They're removing Rocket League from the Steam Store and, and releasing it exclusively on the Epic Store! Which is, again... Completely, completely pointless! pointless. Because Rocket Steam made Rocket League. But now they have gone. Let me double check this. Don't believe me? Do it. Let's double check this. Yeah. Rocket League bought by Epic Games. Rocket League bought by Epic Games will not will no longer be available on Steam. Damn it! Thank you. 
Next, please. <laughs> Next, please. A little bit of positive news from something completely unexpected. Yes. Uh, no luck catching them geese, then. <laughs> what? <laughs> What's her name? No, 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 no. No luck catching them geese, then. What's her name? No. No luck catching them geese, then. No. Uh, it's just the one goose, actually. What's it? Oh, hang on a second. Hello? What's her name? Uh, right, oh, the, right, the goose has escaped. Right, the goose has escaped. Right, okay. Um, okay, what's the name? P.I. Staker. P.I. Staker. Right, take a... Come on! <laughs> obviously, I can't... Obviously, I can't say the... Actual joke name. Oh, the Cornetto Trilogy. <laughs> I've still not seen The World's End yet, folks, but I do plan on getting around to that at some point. But anyway, how our horrible goose game topped the gaming chart. This is on the BBC website, folks. This is on BBC News. Untitled Goose Game tells the story of a horrible goose. Here we go. Against all odds, an unnamed goose has topped the download charts on the Nintendo Switch in the UK and Australia. It has beaten one of Nintendo's own highly anticipated games, The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. It all started two years ago with a photo of a goose shared in a group chat. The small team of game developers discuss what made geese so amusing. Was it their crazy colouring? Their frowning faces? Perhaps their... Perhaps simply their... Honking noises? They decided to make the creature the star of their next game and posted a teaser video on YouTube. We had very little expectation of attention, says Jack Stracer from the House House Studio. Within a matter of hours, we knew that something was up. The video had been watched maybe half a million times. Retweets started pouring in. We had the number one spot on Reddit that night. We hadn't realized what was on our hands. At least... Actually, if this game's somehow free to play... Oh, hamburgers. Not a bloody camera over. Right, still works. Right. If this game's free to play... <sighs> if this game's free to play... Uh... Nintendo eShop, that's what we're after. If this game... If this, oh, you've already got a Switch. Yes, I've got a Switch. Like I said, if this game's free to play... Yes, I have my Switch in front of me right now. I'm actually going to look for this. Recent releases. Nope, that's not what we're after. Full oh, Fortnite. For, seriously, Fortnite's on Switch? Is yeah. that a thing? No, it's not true. Yep. Yeah. It's in the search. It's in the search. Untitled Goose Game. Is it free to play? No, it isn't. But it's got twenty five percent off right now. Mm. You got Sonic Mini on there? No, I've got it on Xbox. Oh man! I'll probably give it a miss for now. Well, mind you, they do have to make money from the game somehow. But nevertheless. By the way, Team Sonic Racers, Team Sonic Racing is better than Crash Bandicoot. Oh, don't worry, we will test that. <laughs> I'm gonna be getting Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled on my Xbox at some point. I've already got it. Which means you'll have Spyro the Dragon. Oh no, wait, that's on. Pl no, wait, that's a PlayStation exclusive, isn't it? Oh, Spyro. Oh, you mean the game that that's recently released? Recent release for PC. Oh, you mean the game I bought for PC? Oh, you mean the game another game I'll be able to run an ultra graphics due to my Ryzen 2600? Shut up! <laughs> Get on with it! If you. Look, so. If, if so, you are heading for a review, I will more than happily do it. James, you've got Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled on Xbox. Do you have Spy with the Dragon or is that exclusively on PlayStation? Oh, Spyro the Dr Spyro Reignited? That's no. on Xbox as well. I'm talking about the character in the game. Is Spyro the Dragon in Crash Team Racing Nitro Field on Xbox, or is it just on PlayStation? PlayStation exclusive. That's what I thought. Looks like I'll be getting the PlayStation 
Looks like I'll be getting the PlayStation um, uh, version then. Because I want Spyro the Dragon in the game. I want to play the Spyro the Dragon. Anyway. So, don't worry though, you two. Don't you worry, you two. Or if I'm, or if I'm lucky and I you get... three. Or if, I, or if I'm lucky and I get both and I get both versions in a sale. Yeah, that could work. I have it on both platforms, and it gives me a chance to get the 1,000 gamer score on Xbox and the elusive platinum trophy on PlayStation. Oh, another game for you to platinum run. Goody, goody, goody. I now have seven platinum trophies to my name. I think it's seven. Sure. Top Racing World Tour, Uncharted 1, Uncharted Remaster, by the way, uh, Batman Telltale series, Crash Bandicoot from the Insane Trilogy, Spyro 1, Kingdom Hearts 3, Lego Incredibles 2. Yeah, that's seven platinum trophies I've got. Yeah. Seven. By the way, trust me, the stipulations you guys will not like. That's all I'm saying. Of this face off, the stipulations you will not like. Mm -hmm. He'll explain it. He'll, he'll explain away from the camera. End of the end of the he'll explain off camera, folks. Right. No, anyway. um, you know what? At the very end of this podcast, I'll explain. Anyway, so the developers joked about geese in their group chat, and this is what they said. Uh, they have a picture of a goose. Let's make a game about this. It's really crazy that, they're, that their <laughs> nose and legs are bright orange. I like the creases in, on their ankles. They always cross, they're always cross ducks. They're always cross. Ducks are happy. Geese are cross. <laughs> okay. This early social media attention undoubtedly gave the goose a lift in the crowded games market, having all the ingredients of a hit that does not always guarantee success. There's just too many games coming out, and some people who are making amazing games need to know how to sell them as well, says Mike Rose, director of a rival indie games publisher, No More Robots. I'm pretty sure I've heard that name before, No More Robots. What have they done? Anyway... If you can get across the concept of your game in the form of pictures or a simple phrase, then you're on to a winner. In Untitled Goose Game, yes, that is the actual name of the game, players assume the role of a horrible goose that terrorizes the inhabitants of a sleepy English... Oh my god, this is going to be hot fuzz all over again! But instead of it being swan, it'll be goose! Yes, come on. <laughs> I wonder if the village is Sandford as well. That would really make it more hilarious. Wouldn't uh, wouldn't uh, be a lot more. Um, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be a little? Wouldn't it be a little more funny? What if it was an arm with a shotgun? <laughs> <laughs> run, dizzy, run, dizzy, run, run, yes. run. <laughs> Wait, hang on. What? Why does that sound so familiar? Run rabbit, run rabbit, run run run. Here comes the counter with his gun, gun, gun. Which was actually a World War II song. Oh right, okay, that clears that up. Uh, da, 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 da. British, of course. There is no motive other than causing mischief, which Nes Nico Disseldorp, who worked on Untitled Goose Game, credits with capturing gamers' interest. I think the Goose character allows people to be the source of mischief that lots of people desire being in video games, he told the BBC. No matter what the game is, you find a certain kind of player will look for ways of making mischief. They may ignore the story that's been laid out of, laid out in front of them, uh, laid out for them, to go and do something mischievous instead. Oh boy, so many people do that in Grand Theft Auto, and any open world game for that matter. Bully. Ooh, yes. Bully scholarship edition, remember that? Yep. I was too... Oh, I'm scared of you, boy. I was, I was, I wasn't meant to be playing those games when I was younger, folks. That's music from, that's music from the game, right? Yep. That's what I thought. In this game, you're told to go in there and uh, make as big a mess as possible. An example of an objective here is stealing the groundkeeper's keys. <laughs> I mean, goodness gracious, 
Huawei my keys. The game has been compared to the Hitman series, in which Assassin Agent 47 concocts elaborate schemes to take out his targets. Mr. Disseldorp says the team definitely drew a lot from Hitman games. Well, they were bound to have some sort of inspiration at some point, but not always intentionally. We wanted the small moment of mischief and gradually gravitated towards stealth games where the player know, might know things and other characters on the screen don't know. We realised it was very rich for the kinds of comedic moments that we were trying to add to our game, he said. Mr. Strasser says the format of an assassination in Hitman is similar to a prank or a joke. It has a setup and a punchline. By removing the violence from it, we just let these situations exist as a joke. Another key ingredient in a, in a hit game is a strong protagonist. And Mr. Disseldorp said the geese stood out for being excessive and full of attitude. Okay. Uh, next, uh, we don't really have geese in our lives here in urban Melbourne, but we realise that people who live near geese have this very particular relationship with them that they're very afraid of geese, and that seems very strange to us, he explains. The relationship that people have with geese seems to be almost like the relationship you would have with a person you don't like. Oh boy, you don't need to remind me, don't need to tell me twice regarding that one. Another objective here is lock the wimpy kid in a phone booth. <laughs> lock the wimpy kid in a phone booth. Hey, Gringo. Hey, Gringo, let me out of the booth. <laughs> <laughs> I am, I really want to try this game at some point. No, Joe, I really legitimately want to try this game. I might, I, if it's cheap enough, I might actually get it. It's seventeen ninety nine on the Switch. Well, thirteen forty nine right now because they're twenty five percent off at time of recording, folks. The discount might have gone by the time you watch this. Uh, there's a da, 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 da. although the developers are based in Australia, they set the game in a quiet English village, which they described as a natural habitat for the bird. There's always something about the kind of properness of an English village that seems to be the antithesis of what the goose was all about. If the goose was going to be chaotic and making a mess, then the natural foil seemed to be these people who wanted to preserve order, said Mr. Disseldorp. What did the villagers do to deserve their torment? Nothing, he says. The goose isn't morally righteous. The goose sits around... The goose sits outside of human morality. They aren't causing trouble because it's the right thing to do. They're doing it because they're a goose. Oh my word, this article is a lot longer than I anticipated, but... Wow. Tell us about that. And this is the great thing about doing this podcast, though, is you find out about these games that just, uh... Oh, by the way... That just, like Randy Orton's RKO's, just come out of absolutely nowhere and just take the world by storm. Oh, by the way... Yeah? I've also seen an, an interesting uh, article about Half-Life 2. An update 15 years after its release? Yes. Nothing major. Mm. I'll say, I'll say, I'll say, I'm a massive Half-Life fan. I'll say, I'll say, I'll say, I'll say it'll, be, it'll be nothing major, but the fact that there's been an update 15 years after the game released, who knows what that could be. But, uh, anyway, so here we go. Uh, this is going to be interesting. Um, some news on Borderlands 3, folks, and uh, voice actor Troy Baker claims Gearbox refused union talent for Borderlands 3. He disputes Gearbox's version of events. Hmm, that could, that could potentially hurt sales. That could potentially... Gearbox Software, only in the company that screwed up the, um, screwed up the, um, Halo port. Port, um, port, uh, Halo Combat Evolved to PC. Ouch! Halo Combat Evolved on Xbox was 60. Halo Combat Evolved on PC was locked at 30. Half the frame rate. Oh, my word. So, 
Not interested. Probably my stomach rumbling telling me to get some lunch. We've been recording all afternoon, folks, so I've not had any lunch yet, so bear with me. Um, so here we go. This is the statement that Gearbox said following uh, following, um, following on from Troy Baker's claim. Troy is an exceptional talent, and we were disappointed that he declined to partner on Borderlands 3 after being offered the part. We wish him the best and hope and hope he knows the offer to collaborate with him still stands. Gearbox is a Texas company and is bound by Texas law, which means that a person cannot be denied employment because of, a, because of membership or non-membership in a labor union or other labor organization. As a talent-owned and talent-led organization, Gearbox enthusiastically works to ensure our pay and working conditions meet or exceed union standards. We also believe strongly in hiring local voice actors whenever we can, which is why we, which is why we're thrilled Troy's career really took off after working with us. Um, okay. So here's the original story. Renegade Hyperion suit Reese may have made a return in Borderlands Three, but he just wasn't the same. What, was it the terrible moustache, the new cyborg arm, or maybe it's because he wasn't voiced by Troy Baker, his actor from Telltale's excellent Tales from the Borderlands. R.I.P. Telltale. Back in April, Gearhead Randy Pitchford stated via Twitter that Troy Baker had turned the job down, at least according to his voice director. After a chat with Baker over the weekend, VG247's Kirk... McKean reports that it's not quite so clean cut. Baker alleges that Gearbox decided to go with non-union voice talent this time. They wouldn't go union, and I can't do a non-union gig. Very interesting. He was eager to return to the role too, claiming that he was waiting for the call to officially bring his character to the mainland Borderlands series. Unfortunately, he was left disappointed. On the casting change, Pitchford said that I don't think it actually matters at all, but after hearing Reese's new voice, I'd beg to differ. This, is the this isn't the first recorded incident of Gearbox's antagonism towards their voice talent. Claptrap actor and former Gearbox executive David Eddings me, minion. <laughs> didn't return to voice the irritating trash bot due to a pay dispute. Specifically, he disputed that he should be paid for the role. He hadn't previously done the work free on the side as part of a, his larger role at Gearbox, but was hoping to be a fully credited and paid voice actor in the sequel. Even outside of Borderlands, Gearbox's dealings seem to have rustled some feathers. Duke Nukem 3D composer Bobby Prince is suing the studio for using his work without paying royalties. It's also alleged that the company sent private investigators to a possible leaker's house. It's also impress it's almost impressive just how much controversy this one studio generates. Which you've just mentioned, James. What? Regarding Halo Combat Evolved. Personally, I hope they reconsider their stance on union voice actors by the time their next big project launches. And PC port. Yeah. <laughs> the PC port of Halo Combat Evolved. Locked at 30 frames per second. Unacceptable! Yeah, thanks, Lemon Grab. However, though, XPV3 fixes that. What was that? XPV3 fixes that. XPV3 Single Player Version 3 is a community made mod, which basically puts him by Halo Combat World Anniversary to shame. Style. Ouch. Well, the graphics looks gorgeous. The music's been remastered. Mhm. Mm <coughs> Everything has just changed. Ooh, hello. Sixty percent off Spider-Man at uh, on the PlayStation Store. Mm -hmm. oh, I actually scratched that twenty-eight percent off. <laughs> But hey, 25 quid for the uh, base game, 35 quid for the uh, Game of the Year edition. 
Shame I don't have the money to get it yet. Because I'm trying to keep my money aside for heading down to Huddersfield next weekend. Which will mean there's no podcast, um, which means there probably won't be any podcast next week. But we'll wait and see if I've got the time. Anyway. The GoldenEye 64 campaign's getting the fan remake, and oh my word, people are saying it looks great. They do. It's using Unreal Engine 4. Right, here we go. The silo f- level has been finished, and the n- there's new footage to behold. Uh, now, just, I, I wouldn't... just playing safe, we won't play the footage. Anyway, while GoldenEye Source is a good way to play multiplayer at GoldenEye 007 on modern PCs, the game's brilliant campaign is a trickier experience to recapture. If you emulate it, you'll find that it hasn't aged well. So it's neat So it's neat that a small team of enthusiasts are working on a, w- on a free Unreal Engine 4 port. <coughs> the video in this article shows the completed version of the Silo mission, which will be playable when GoldenEye 25 releases in a couple of years. Wait, hang on. What? 25? Right. Let, let me get this straight. GoldenEye came out in 1995, the film did. Yeah. But the game didn't come out till 97? That would mean like 20. That would mean it would be 2022 before it comes out. Which means, yeah, we only have a couple of years to wait, realistically. Wow. No. The footage. In terms of game development, Rush games normally fail. For example, Halo the Master Chief Collection. Oh, don't even get me started on that one. They might as well, I was like, what they could have done I was... Really what they to... What they could have done was just simply released Halo 2 Anniversary. Just release Halo 2 Anniversary individually. Separately. I would disagree with that. I would say release the remastered versions of Halos one by one. Taking their time. They had already remastered the first Halo game. They had already done that. Well, well, yes, but then again, they've already done that with Anniversary. Yes, I'll give you that. But then again, I would have said, you know, like porting Halo on Anniversary so- to the um, Xbox One should have been simultaneous with the um, Halo 2 anniversary. So, then, then so the ha- so so the Halo anniversary uh, on the Xbox One is basically a remaster of the remaster. Yes. For the PC version, especially yes, because I was not even aware that was possible. So wait, wait, hang, hang on. The PC version is a remaster of a remaster. That is of another rem- the, the same remaster. Oh, my brain hurts! I know. But then again... It's, it's, like that, it's, like, it's like that one episode of Rick and Morty. It's a simulation. Oh, it's a simulation. simulation inside another giant simulation. Ah! Right, that's that's, that's basically what it is! Get on with this. You're, you're, you're wasting time, bro. <laughs> Don't enjoy these little off-track moments. <laughs> But anyway, uh, the video, the video in the article uh, on PC Gamer shows off the complete version. Uh, which one? The footage is perfectly. Da, 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 da. The footage is perfectly in keeping with the spirit of the original, except with improved textures, improved lighting, improved character models, and well, improved everything. Uh, according to the. Uh, according to the Golden Eye 25 Indie DB page, the goal is for the remake to be completed by August 2022 in order to mark the original game's 25th anniversary. All assets will be created from scratch, and the music won't ape the original, opting instead to capture its mood without presumably risking a cease and desist. Well, you can understand why they wouldn't want to put the music in. You can understand why. On that note, the team seems fairly confident its project won't be shutting down, won't be shut down, given how unscathed GoldenEye Source remains. Okay. I'm pretty sure I'll check that one out when I get the chance. Well, GoldenEye Source? No, GoldenEye 25 when it comes out. Yes, but then again, you could, if you want to, you can actually play GoldenEye Source now. Oh, I've played GoldenEye Source before. It's amazing. 
Oh, of course you were using my ring. Yes. Yes, where... Which you were particularly fond with one of the bot names, Tilted Cartridge. <laughs> <laughs> tilted Cartridge, you just tilt the cartridge slightly and just get down. Super the top of the this not here Give a chee! He made it here, he made it here, he did it away! <laughs> Oh, well, my Ladies head's and gentlemen. spinning. Well, my head's spinning. Hey, shut up, Tails! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Gadan glitch. <laughs> Pokemon Go reveals new Team Rocket members, Cliff, Arlo, and Sierra. Hmm, interesting. We have new Team Rocket members for Rare Pokemon Go. Excellent. And this won't be the only piece of trouble. And make it job to me. To protect the world from devastation. To unite the people in our nation. To denounce the evils of truth and love. To extend our reach to stars to the stars above. Jesse! James! Team Rocket! Blast off at the speed of light! Surrender now, prepare to fight! Meow! That's right! Swabbit! Can you tell we watched too much Pokemon when we were younger? Yes. Very much so. If that's the case, <laughs> Team Rocket's Rocket busted up again! again. Ding. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway. Serious, seriously, Nintendo. Get Team Rocket and Smash Bros. now. Oh, that would be fun to see. So we can actually recreate that! <laughs> so, anyway, here we go. Um, Niantic have officially released the new Team Rocket characters who were recently teased using glitchy images found in a corrupted folder. Professor Willow uncovered the files hidden on his computer and has now managed to fully recover the pictures to reveal new Team Rocket members. Cliff, Arlo and Sierra. The characters were unveiled in a series of tweets posted on po po the Pokemon Go official Twitter account after a recent poster-like image showing the menacing trio with Shadow Pokemon facing a trainer was shown. In the last tweet it states, we don't know how these characters will affect the world of Pokemon Go. Ooh, something is on the horizon, but as Niantic says, we'll have to stay tuned as Willow continues to investigate. So yeah. So we got, so we have the, we have the, uh, as I, um, because again we won't be able to, just, to, just playing safe, not be able to show you these issues. But yeah, uh, but yeah, looks like we've got new Team Rocket members to battle at uh, Corrupted Poker Stops. Okay, that's good. Yeah, the Team Rocket battles, you face them and then you capture, and then, then the challenge after that is capturing one of their Corrupted Pokemon. You can purify it, which will make it much stronger than it is. And I, that actually happened with me with uh, when I captured a Corrupted Rattata. 93% IV, purified it, boom, 100%. IV? Yep. But some lucky sod in my, some lucky sod in the, the uh, group chat that we've got on Facebook Messenger, some lucky sod has uh, a 100% shiny Mewtwo. <coughs> yep. And I just thought, lucky so-and-sos. Anyway, uh, looks like someone sent me something. Avengers damage control? Is this the next Avengers film? I know it's not gaming related, folks, but... Probably. Oh! Wrong. Looks like it's a VR experience. Most probably using Oculus. Led by one John Carmack. <laughs> okay. Oh my, already 
continue Iron Man suit. Tony Stark really must be good with. Uh, not anymore. He isn't. Why? Because he's. I, 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 I can't say on camera because there might be some people that still haven't seen Endgame yet. Yeah, Damage Control, it is a VR game. Damage Control is a VR game. Okay. Right, uh, let's get back to the news. Let's get back to the news. We've got another article on Pokemon Go. Uh, no, Pokemon. Uh, Sword and Shield producer on National Dex drama. Says cut Pokemon will return in future. Hmm. Okay. You can look forward to seeing Pokemon that don't appear in these games appearing in different regions in future games. In, in future games. Oh. Okay, now what does that mean? Right. So. So here we go. Uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield producer Junichi Masuda sparked much controversy earlier this year at E3 2019 when he revealed that the upcoming Switch titles will not feature every Pokemon from the series. This marks a dramatic change from past installments. And now we've learned a bit more on why developer Game Freak came to that decision. Speaking to Game Informer, Masuda revealed that the decision to scale back Sword and Shield's Pokedex was made in part to free up the development team to work on other ideas for the games. Up until now, we've been proud we've been able to include so many Pokemon in the games. But as, the, as a result of that, there's actually been quite a few features or gameplay ideas that we've had to abandon in the past. Going forward, thinking about the future of Pokemon, we want to prioritise all those new gameplay ideas, new ways to enjoy the game, and want to challenge ourselves at Game Freak to create new ways to enjoy the game. That's what really what drove the decision for this new direction. Um, doesn't that technically go, you know, against the whole idea of the Pokemon franchise, which is... Gotta catch them all. Doesn't that go against that idea? It does, you're right. So, I'm guessing that's another game screw up for the week. I wouldn't necessarily... It's not as major as Activision, but... We recently got a glimpse at a couple of new features in the game, such as camping and curry cooking. Oh, okay. It appears that's the only tip of the... That's only the tip of the iceberg we've... We have a lot of awesome new challenges that we haven't even revealed in Sword and Shield. Masuda said, we want to continue to come up with these new features, so we figured this was the best path forward for the franchise. While it's disappointing that Sword and Shield won't support every Pokemon in the series, Masuda reiterates that cut monsters will still return in future games. So they aren't gone permanently. You can look forward to seeing Pokemon that don't appear in these games that don't appear in these games appearing in different regions in future games. Friday. Oh, hello. This is actually good. You'll still be able to store all of your po old Pokemon in the upcoming Pokemon Home Cloud service, which will launch for Switch and smartphones early next year. We're really designing it as the place for all of your Pokemon together. So it's really important to f for the future of the franchise and it will be more than even Pokemon, and it will be more than even Pokemon Bank as a place to gather all your Pokemon together in one spot. Pokemon Bank was on the Nintendo 3DS, right? Correct. Pokemon Sword and Shield. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Pokemon Sword and Shield launch for Nintendo Switch on November 15th, and we'll learn a bit more about the games very soon as the Pokemon Company will be broadcasting a 24-hour Animal Cam style stream starting. Tomorrow, in fact. We're recording this on Thursday, folks. Which will showcase live footage from an in-game location. Hmm. So it's not all doom and gloom, then. 
Now, what Pokemon are going to be cut from the game remains to be seen, but I'm sure we'll find out soon enough. But of course, they're going to need to make sure they have every Pokemon in the Kanto region. Not necessarily that, but the, obviously they're going to have all the Pokemon from the current from the region we're going to be exploring. Yeah. Whatever the name of the region is again. Anyway. Don't know. Don't care. Nintendo. They're still living in the nineties. Anyway, Sony cuts. Sony cuts PS Now subscription price for PS4 worldwide. Now this is interesting. Is this going to be exclusive, or is it going to be permanent? Okay then. Well, let's see what they have. Or is it going to be? Or is it going to be log content for a year? Just don't <laughs> get me started. Oh, so easy to wake you up. Right. <laughs> PlayStation Now, Sony's game streaming service for PS4 and PC. You got my attention. What? <laughs> okay. What? You said okay. what? A PS PlayStation Now, Sony's game streaming service for PS4 and PC, is now available at a permanent lower price. So it is permanent! Woohoo! So, what exactly does PlayStation Now entail? Well, that's what we're just about to find out. I'll get into that shortly. Uh, monthly subscriptions are now $10 or £9, which is a considerable reduction from the previous $20 or £13 price point. Quarterly subscriptions, meanwhile, will now cost $25 or £23, having been previously $45 US dollars and unavailable elsewhere. Finally, a year's PS Now membership is now $60 or £50, down from $100 or £85. <sighs> yeah, you can see why they wanted to do the reductions. Three words. Um, Game Pass Ultimate. Sony, Sony is not doing themselves. It's Microsoft that's forcing them to do it. Microsoft forced their hand in this. That's competition for you. <laughs> nice yeah. gold star for you. <laughs> yeah, and. Uh, I'm not paying anything on my Xbox uh, Game Pass Ultimate until March or February. April for me. February next year. Yeah. Because the time we had on our Xbox Gold was converted into Game Pass Ultimate time. On top of the time that I had left on my month of Xbox Game Pass... Eleven ninety nine a month, and I actually predicted it would be round about that sort of price range. You know what? I am keeping with Game Pass Ultimate. I don't care for it if it's ten ninety nine a month. I was like, like that. I predicted it would be in that sort of price range when I reported on this when when they first came up with the idea. Mm -hmm. And during and after the react after the reaction to the Microsoft E three conference, I got Game Pass Ultimate there and then. Best decision I've ever made. Still waiting on my game. Still waiting on Game Pass for PC though. As a matter of fact, do you, you want to try your um, because because as a matter of fact, your Xbox Live, your Xbox Game Pass for PC membership should be active. Xbox Console Companion, possibly. Oh. No. That is not what I'm saying. Right. What I was talking about an Xbox a beta app. Not the Xbox console companion. You're barking up the wrong tree. Right. Let's try that. Right. The annoying thing though is the fact that once it decides to load. Yeah. 
I mean, look at that. It says I own the app. Ah. But I cannot install it. Hmm. I think I have a problem with that. I think I can see where your problem is. But. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. There should be a standalone installer for it, which should contain the update you're looking for. That might be the case. Well, that is that is how I can now play Undertale on my laptop. Don't show you off or anything. There we go. Right, so first thing first, it should be able to check your system. Oh, actually, Xbox installer. Yep. Right, we'll get right. So it should be able to check your Windows version of Windows. And ah, it has screenshot. It has screenshot. Shot. I see screenshot with Ori. Do you know why? Ori's on Game Pass for PC. Yay! And this guy was generous enough to get me a copy of Ori in the Blind Forest from the ex from the Microsoft Store for my laptop. Fraser, you were under a lot of stress at the time. This guy. Ori. Yeah, this guy knows. I was like, back, back, in, back into shot, back into shot. Back on camera, back on camera. Back on camera. Take a seat. Two seconds. Oh, right. And you go. And you go. Ah! <laughs> Careful, watch the cable, watch the cable, watch the cable. There we go. Go, go, go! <laughs> Xbox Beta install. There we go. Da! Bear on me a college reference! Otherwise. I will. <laughs> this was before they were plagued by microtransactions, James. Actually, no. Actually, no. To be fair, it's a CSGO reference. Fair enough. Fair enough. I'll really? Do a... Didn't know that. Yeah, so... Um, so, basically, I'll explain to you what I mean. into that shortly. Uh, da, 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 da. The new price points are active right now. Existing customers will see the new cost reflected in their upcoming bill. The price cut applies worldwide at, on the platform's catch-all subscription, not on individual game rentals. Sony also revealed a number of new titles being added to PS Now, the PS Now library. God of War 2018. Boy! Then we've got Um, Infamous Second Son, Grand Theft Auto V, and Uncharted 4 A Thief's End are all now available as part of the service's subscription offering, but they will be removed on January 2nd, 2020, Sony said. PlayStation now launched in 2014, at first allowing PS4 users to stream PS3 games before being expanded to include PS4 titles and to allow streaming to PCs. However, rival services have emerged in recent months and years, including the upcoming Google Stadia and Microsoft's Project xCloud, which enters open beta this month. So, nice win there for... Um... Uh, nice win there for Micro uh, Sony.
for that. Right. So there we go. Yeah, turns out I did need an update. Fantastic. Right, so there we go. Start the update. You see what I mean? Why didn't I find this earlier? Well, I, tr well, in my defense, I tried with saying, like, you have to install the installer, but saying, no, I can't access my games. I want to access my games. I was like, yo, calm down. Just install on the installer. <laughs> chill, bro, chill. Ah, I need to update to the latest version. Ah, oh, right. My, uh, my version of Windows 10 is so far behind. It's in 1809. The latest version is in 1903. 96 years. Uh, yeah, 96 years. Oh, my goodness me. No, uh, right. no 96 version numbers, technically. <laughs> but hey, there we go. For Pete's sake. What's happened? 96 version. What? That's how far behind this thing is? Nope. No wonder I couldn't find the Game Pass games for PC. No, Fraser, just... <laughs> Alright, James, have a seat. Have a seat. Okay. So, you don't need to keep standing all the time when you play. I, I have the seats here for a reason. I they know. are designed to be sat on. Anyway, back to Ori in the Blind Forest for a moment, folks. This guy knows how much I love that damn game. Fraser, it's been on your top ten of the... 20 games of 2016, I believe. No, it was, doesn't take a rocket science. It was number one in my top 10 games of 2015. Yes, I didn't go into much detail at the time. The Definitive Edition came out the following year. I did a review on it, and oh my word, I still love it to this day. The game is four and a half years old, and I could get lost in the game for hours and never get tired of it. That's how much I love it. It's essentially one of my... One of my comp it's essentially everyone everyone's got thing everyone's got their comfort film or comfort game or comfort food if they're feeling down. Age of Empires 2 for me. Boom. There you go. Perfect example. Comfort film for me, Hercules. And then com <laughs> Not necessarily because of that song, but because of the because of another song, Go the Distance. Fraser. You set me off on that one! I know. You're bold. <laughs> hey, justified. What? Justified. Anyway. Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, say, listen, I'll say, because of, because of how bad things were for me at the time, he bought Ori in the Blind Forest from the Microsoft Store for me as a present. And I cannot wait for Ori and the Will of the Wisps to come out. Now, it's going to be... It's like four months away. February 2020 it comes out. Mm -hmm. and, the, and in the definitive edition of the game, I'm only missing completing the game on one life difficulty. It's a lot tougher than it looks, guys. Trust me on that. But nevertheless. Nevertheless. PC gamers can now enjoy Super Mario Odyssey with constant 60 FPS on the Nintendo Switch emulator. Use Right, so here we go. The team behind the open source Nintendo Switch emulator Yuzu has released a brand new version of it. This new version of Yuzu comes with some significant performance improvements in a number of games, such as PC game. As such, PC gamers can finally enjoy Super Mario Odyssey with constant 60 FPS. This latest performance improvements, these latest performance improvements are a result of a new asynchronous GPU emulation. As such, the latest version of Yuzu Canary can run faster pretty much all games. Yay, so says. Not only that, but The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening can also boot now. Whoa, hello. Yeah. Link's Awakening can boot now. Oh my word, Link's Awakening's just around the corner. Yeah. My favourite is... Oh, I'm one fish. My favorite, my favorite uh, Zelda song's got to be the Song of Time. Which one? 
Are you sh the DM depending on which one you're talking about? Like the original Song of Time. Yes, but then again, is it is it played on the ocarina or is it the original original? Yes, but then there are two versions of Tim of the Song of Time. One you played with the Ocarina of Time, or the other that's played in the Temple of Time. Confession time, folks. I've not played Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, so I haven't got a clue. Well, I only I've only really heard the one that's played on the Ocarina. The Temple of Time version is the version that you've you've let me listen to on an Unreal Engine Four tech demo thing. Yep, which is actually done by Diesel. Yeah, but like I said, and, um, but like I said, I was talking about the original, 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 original. Yes, I know, but then again... Which was on the ocarina. Original means ocarina, James. Yes, I know. Anyway. Now, unfortunately, this emulator has a long way until it can run a wide range of Nintendo Switch games. Bayonetta 2 and, and Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, for instance, are still unplayable. Thankfully, PC gamers can use the Nintendo Wii U emulator, CEMU, in order to play these game, these two games. Yuzu can currently run a few games. PC gamers can already enjoy games like Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu. They should be able to run Pikachu Let's Go Eevee at the same time, if that's the case. Because they're both practically the same game. The only difference is, well, yeah. one's got Pikachu and one's got Eevee. As your starter. Yeah. Well, and... I would... But if sort of it up to me, I would definitely go for Eevee. It's the most adaptable Pokemon. Yeah, it's got what? Eight Eeveelutions now? Jolteon. Vaporeon. Flareon. Umbreon. Uh, Sylveon. Glaceon. Leafeon. That's seven. Mm -hmm. Which one are we missing? Ones am I missing? Which one am I missing? Oh, it's Espeon, not not Sylveon. Sylveon's not until Gen Six. Sylveon's not till Gen Six. It's Espeon that's in Gen Two. I've just realised what Eevee doesn't have a fighting type. It's got water, electric, fire, dark. I don't think Eevee's design language would have been a um, uh, good evolution for a fighting type. Hmm, makes sense. Water, electric, fire, psychic, dark, ice, grass, and fairy. What about a flying type, possibly? I mean, all it would need Sky is... Skyveon? That could work. I mean, all they all would need is wings. That's all it would need. Yeah. Anyway, uh... Uh, look at the last book. Pikachu and Super Mario Maker 2. One Piece Unlimited World Red Deluxe Edition also runs with 60 FPS. Oh my word, on an i7, yeah. Well, yeah, it definitely needs a powerful PC for that one. So, it's requiring an i7, eh? Uh, well, it's probably recommended. Mm. Right, next. Nothing on my... Nothing on my Ryzen. Nothing on my Ryzen. Not sure I was going to say. Anyway. Anyway, ah, much more like the length of the podcast I was expecting. 
We've been at this for about an hour and a half now. But nevertheless, we've got two we've got two things left to take care of. It's been a while since I've done this, but who has the better? <laughs> What was that? I believe that was one of the planets, Mars. From the planet suite. Yep. Gustav Holt. Yep. I've only I've only listened to Jupiter's. I've only listened to Jupiter. Yeah. But anyway. But anyway, nevertheless, it's been a while since I've done this. Who has the better free games for October 2019? It's Microsoft versus Sony, the Battle of the Free Games for October 2019. So let's have a look and see what they have. The So, I would definitely say September's games were better, in my opinion, for, for, for Microsoft. So, based on that, they get, whoever wins the previous month gets the advantage here. Ah, oh. FIFO. Huh? FIFO. Meaning? First thing, first thing. Ah, gotcha. Right. They get the advantage of going first. So, here we go. Next up, so here we go. Um, the first game for Xbox at the start of the month is a game called Tembo the Badass Elephant. That's interesting. A 2015 2D side-scrolling platformer released on Xbox One, you'll control an elephant called Tembo, who can smash into objects, stomp on enemies and tanks, use water in his trunk to put out fires and more as he makes his way through Shell City intent on stopping a military force called the Phantom. Timbo the Badass Elephant will be of it will be free all month long. Interesting. Yo it's good of Microsoft to finally acknowledge the existence of Sega. Because Timbo the Badass Elephant is indeed a Sega game. That I did not know. And the other free game available like Team Sonic Racing. Better than Crash Team Racing Shut up! Racing. The other free game available at the start of the month is Bolt, which is based on Disney's 2008 animated film. A Disney film that I haven't seen. I know. I, I know. You're thinking, what? A Disney film you haven't seen? You said you're the biggest Disney fan in the world! What is this heresy? <laughs> yeah, what is this heresy? <laughs> anyway. Yeah, it's one of those films that I haven't seen because I don't really have any intention of seeing it. Because um, it's, it's a film that doesn't really interest me. I mean, I mean... It's a, I mean, it's a free game. Can't go wrong with that. Can't go wrong with free games. Uh, the single-player adventure game follows Superdog Bolt and Penny as they undertake missions with Bolt using his various powers like Superbark and Laser Eyes. Goodness me, is he, is he, is, are they trying to make this? I mean, are they trying to make Bolt look like Superman? Anyway, uh, to battle enemies. This Xbox 360 game is available on Xbox One due to backwards compatibility and will be available until October 15th. Okay. Then, halfway through the month, you'll get access to Ninja Gaiden 3 Razor's Edge, an action-adventure Xbox 360 game starring Ryu Hayabusa, the master ninja from the previous Ninja Gaiden games. An upgraded re-release of Ninja Gaiden 3 Razor's Edge introduces a host of new playable characters who each bring their own unique ninja abilities. This game is also available on Xbox One due to backwards compatibility and will be available from October 16th to October 31st. And Friday the 13th, the game, is the fourth and final free game available for Xbox Live Gold members this month. This third-person survival horror game allows uh, for up to eight people to play in one session, with seven people controlling camp counsellors and the other person controlling serial killer Jason Voorhees.
Friday the 13th again will be available for free on Xbox One for a full month from October 16th to November 15th. I might play this game on Halloween as a live stream. Should I do that? Yep. That's Halloween sorted this year, folks, on my channel. As long as it's not the horrible, horrible Call of Duty Ghosts. No. Because, because on one of the maps you can play as... Michael Myers. Michael Myers, yeah. That was bloody terrifying! Especially with the fact that they managed to get the Halloween theme in there as well. PlayStation Plus, PS Plus October. So let's have a look and see what they've got. Now, PlayStation are at a disadvantage here because they only have two games. Because they've stopped um, giving out free games on PS3 and PS Vita. But nevertheless, let's they see. They them. They killed them. And they've all, and they've also they've also shut down the servers for games like uh, Uncharted on PlayStation Three, which means, which begs the question: When are they actually going to discontinue the PS Three? Has it been discontinued? Come to think they've of done it. it, they've done it. They've done it back in about a year ago. Maybe two. Oh, September. September twenty September 29, 2015 was when it was Ah right there we go that's what it is. Right. Placed uh September 29, 2015, Sony confirmed that the sales of PS3 were to be discontinued in New Zealand, but the system remained in production in other markets. Shipments of new units to Europe and Australia ended in March 2016, followed by North America, which ended in October 2016. Okay. So officially, October 2016 was the day the PS3 was discontinued for good. Okay. So, let's see what games they have. Have a look. Right. So the first, so one of the games is MLB The Show 19. It features baseball legends both past and present. It's even got an RPG style mode, not to mention all the usual single player and online modes. Take part in the ultimate baseball duel, the battle between hitter and pitcher, read the official description. Get in a quick game and explore a full RPG style experience or take on the world in online competition, playing as MLB legends past and present. Hmm, okay. And then you've got The Last of Us. With a Metacritic score of 95%, The Last of Us Remastered is easily one of the highest rated games to ever appear on PlayStation Plus. And it's easy to see why. It's one of the most critically acclaimed games of all time. It won so many awards when it came out in 2013. Now, we were considering putting it into our top 10 games of 2013. This is way back when I started um, uh, YouTube proper. Uh, like, properly uploading videos on a regular basis. But mind you, this was back when I was just focusing on gaming. But because we hadn't played it, we couldn't put it on the list. And that means it's essentially ineligible from the top 10 games of the decade because I have to put, I've had to put in my top 10 games of the decade ranking my top games from each year. Now, I didn't get back into gaming until 2013. So what I had to do with 2010, 2011 and 2012, I had to work out how I was going to do those. So there's a bit of leniency with those, but not so much when it comes to um, not when it not so much when it comes to the other years of the decade. There, uh, 2014 being the other exception because I didn't do a top 10 games of 2014 because at the time I was busy looking after my granddad. Um, 
but we'll find out what games did make the list when I do them um, because my because my, the Chalky Achievement podcast about December is just going to be my top 10 now I can scratch that it won't be it won't be no it won't be no yes it will be it'll, do for you. it'll be the start of the year guys it'll be the start of 2020 folks that'll be when I'll have my top 10 games of the year top 10 games of the decade top 10 films of 2019 and top 10 films of the decade on top of two more top 10s which will be my top 10 most anticipated films of 2020 and my top 10 most anticipated games of uh, 2020 spoiler alert number one's already in the will of the wisps let me have that moment guys anyway your idea I was actually going to say, you know, like, um, just before New Year, change your podcast to something like A Year in Review, uh, allowing you to reminisce of the, of the gaming, the, how the year went in gaming. And the, and the world I of might, gaming. A Year in Review, I might do that. that. That's an idea. As a matter of fact, you know what, I might do that for my blog. That is, an, that is a very good idea. I'll keep that in mind. Uh, da, 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 da. In a hostile post-pandemic world, Joel and Ellie bring together a desperate, cir- are brought together by desperate circumstances, must rely on each other to survive a brutal journey across what remains of the USA. Read the official description. The remastered version is what was originally a PS. Re- the remastered version of what was originally a PS3 game features beautiful 1080p HD visuals as well as new multiplayer maps and a single-player prequel starring Ellie. Left Behind, which was originally DLC, but is now added on as part of the remastered game. It also comes with a behind-the-scenes in-game commentary from the cast and creative director. It's also the perfect way to prepare for the upcoming sequel, which has a February 21st release date in 2020. I mean, that's, that's a tough one. That's a that, that, that's a tough one. Which 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 company has the better free games? I mean, you've got a twenty nineteen release. I mean, it's rare for them to do a game that that came out the same year. Very rare for them to do that. And then they've got one of the most critically acclaimed games of all time in The Last of Us. Mm-hmm. The only me, the only high profile game that Microsoft has is Ninja Gaiden. Not necessarily that, but Friday the Thirteenth. Probably the most recent release from the from Microsoft on the on the list on the list of free games this month. Mm-hmm. So let's say let's say have it. Sony have October, folks. They desperately needed a win. But nevertheless, oh mama, I've just had a look at how many trophies I've got to cover here. 51 trophies for, for us to get. The elusive platinum trophy! But of course that means only one thing, ladies and gentlemen. Points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting. Points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting. <laughs> So here we go. Let's see where are the trophies and uh, the secret trophies are just basically story related. So let's get those out of the way. Uh, the trophies are for Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breakpoint, which comes out tomorrow. At time of recording. Yes, because again, we're recording this on Thursday, so I can try and get this up uh, this evening for my patrons. Which I don't have any as of yet. But again, if you guys want to support me on Patreon, patreon.com slash Kenzie Retro, so that uh, you can get early access to my podcast. Among many other great oh among many other great rewards. Mm-hmm. So 
the so the secret trophies. Uh -huh. I'll be uh, I'll be going through these. Uh, I'm going to go through the secret trophies first before I go through the regular trophies. Um, uh, it'll be a case that I'll be going, uh, I'll be, it'll be a case that, for example, uh, the following trophies are bronze. And I'll be going through the bronze trophies, then do the same for silver, and then I'll do the same for the gold. So here we go. The following, uh, the following bronze, uh, secret trophies, the following trophies are bronze. You can't stop us now, Nomad. Finish friendly fire. Toast. Tote signs. Finish our great escape. End of Act 2. Reach the end of Act 2. Cry wolves. Finish speak no evil. Heal no evil. See no evil. That's the wrong way round. They've got. They've got that the wrong way round. It's. Heal no evil. Speak no evil. See no evil. That's the one. Yeah, that's it. The um, three monkeys. Yeah. They got that. The, they got that in the wrong what? order. Yeah, here no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. Anyway, um, cry wolves, change hurts, finish the point of no return, and a safe haven reach the end of Act 1. Two silver trophies in the secret section. Um, here's your world 2.0, kill Walker, and end of Act 3, reach the end of Act 3. And you've got a gold trophy, which is break point, roll credits, re reach the end of Act 4. And now it's on to the rest of the trophies and oh my flip that's a lot of bronze trophies but nevertheless i am contractually obligated to go through the trophies so here we go let's have a look you monster destroy a family a farmer drone these are these are the bronze trophies again wildland millionaire spend 100,000 skell credits what a maniac kill 20 enemies by running them over War never ends. Or does it? No, wait, that's war never changes. Or does it? Anyway. The answer is no. Unless it is yes. yes. Of no. course not. It's war! No. <laughs> yes. No. no. Yes. This is a mission. Blah, blah, blah. It's in secret face. Blah, blah, blah. blah, blah. blah. Nuclear missile bomb. Blah, blah, blah. blah, blah. 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 Counting on you. Blah, blah. blah. do it. <laughs> I am a enemy. Boring, boring. Oh, I am dead. You know what? You know what? After this recording, we'll watch Duty Calls again. We've got it. Anyway, war never ends. Uh, f finish eight faction mi missions in a single day. That should be easy enough. Two faced. Unlock two classes. The Woe of Wit. Find 20 clues in the world. The night is dark. Till t kill tw 12 enemies without being detected. That should be easy enough. Complete the optional dialogue of. Area one, area horn or whatever about your past, synchronized and deadly. Kill an enemy shortly after another player in coop is has killed one. Squad goals: finish three missions in co-op. Uh, snapping turtle: kill an enemy with CQC for, from prone camo. Simple geometry: kill two enemies with a single rocket. Prophylic gun. Prolific gunsmith, upgrade 20 weapons into weapon into marks in total. Lord of War, equip a legendary weapon. Jack of all guns, kill an enemy with every firearm type. It's free real estate. Discover 50 different bivouacs. I don't know how you pronounce that. In the belly of the beast, enter the raid. Heart of darkness, find all eight mysterious corallons. Get it off me! Shoot a wasp while it is still on its carrier's back. You legitimately gotta shoot a wasp. Okay then. For honor, unlock four classes. Expert marksman, kill two enemies more than 200 meters away with th headshots in three seconds. Oh, that one's gonna be fun to pull off. Expert herbalist, pick up 20 different natural resources. Entry level combat. Win one match in Ghost War. St standard. Elite Gorilla. Finish five elite faction mi missions. 
drone farmer destroy 50 enemy drones. Death from above. Kill an enemy 5 seconds after landing from a base jump. Born in the purple. Wear all high-end equipment. Bird watching. Kill a helicopter's pilot with any weapon. Oh, that'll be fun to see. Bang, bang. Get three headshots with a handgun in five seconds. Attachments master. Find 30 attachments with... And then equip one in the gunsmith. Ma a man of the world. Discover 20 different provinces. A hero of our time. Reach level 30. A brutal stop. Kill a convoy's driver with a sink shot drone. This this one is mine! Upgrade a wep... Uh, right, now we're into the silver trophies. This one is mine! Upgrade a weapon to Mark Three. Swiss Army Killer kill an enemy in Ghost War as the Panther, Assault Field Medic, and Sharpshooter. Sting like a bee. Kill a Breacher, a Rocket Gunner, and a Sniper with CQC while in stealth. Master Craftsman, find 40 blueprints and then buy 5 weapons on demand at Maria's. The hunter becomes the hunted. Kill 50 wolves. Ex executive executive perks. Unlock 10 perks in the skills menu. David's challenge. Kill a behemoth. Oh, David and Goliath reference. That's clever. And the only regular gold trophy here is Absolute Mastery. Reach rank 10 with any class. And then you get... And then unlock all those trophies. And you get a trophy called Taming the Devil. Which is earn all trophies to get... The Elusive Platinum Trophy! Elusive Platinum Trophy. And that brings us to the end of uh, this week's... Oh, by the way... That yeah. brings us to the end of this week's podcast, folks. Oh, 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 by the way, there is one story I've just discovered, which, by the way, I'd rather cover. Blizzard said Nintendo can choose whatever Overwatch character you want. What the heck?! Breaking news just in, folks! Breaking news just in. Blizzard says Nintendo can choose whatever character you want for over Overwatch Smash Bros. DLC! What? Reinhardt for Smash Bros. Oh my god, that would be so cool! Reinhardt versus Sonic. They'll probably have Tracer because she's one of the most popular characters. I wouldn't, I would disagree with that. Tracer's the bigger SJW statement. Ah, fair point. Uh, what else? Uh, Reaper? Well, po Reaper, possibly? Yes. Die, die, die. Uh, uh what's, the, what's the name of that guy? Is it? I take your Cleo! That's, I believe, that's Hanzo. Han Hanzo, that's the one. That could work. I mean, imagine if he used that as his final smash. I take your Cleo! And then the dragons just wipe everything out on the screen. Oh my word. I hope you're listening to this, Nintendo. Ah. Oh. Phone's locked again. Uh, they're all our babies. Jeff Kaplan on which Overwatch character he'd like to see in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. That, that is a tough one. Right. Ah, that makes sense why they're talking about it. As the Overwatch Switch release date of October 15th draws ever closer. Holy smokes, that's two weeks away. Game director Jeff Ka Kaplan has offered up his thoughts on whether Super Smash Bros. Ultimate could receive new fighters from the world of Blizzard's multiplayer hero shooter. To the Smash Bros. team, you can have whatever character you want. There you go, Nintendo. Open door policy. Open door policy. So, if you had the choice, James, which Overwatch character would you put into Smash Bros.? Reinhardt. Any particular reason for that? Well, well, Reinhardt would make sense. Tracer's got guns, and and Reaper's also has uh, only got shotguns. Um, Reinhardt is the only person, or Genji, Reinhardt or Genji. Oh, that would be interesting. But well, for me. Probably Hanzo Reaper. Two seconds. Right. Uh, so yeah. You, you better scrub lord. Oh, I will. Don't worry. <laughs> but yeah. So uh, it was uh, Genji or who else? Genji or Hanzo. 
No, for, for you, who you... Reinhardt. Re Reinhardt or Genji for James. Reaper or Hanzo for myself. If they're generous enough, they could end up putting all four in as, a, as like an Overwatch DLC pack. Oh my god, one of my boxes, of course. <laughs> no, 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 no. Nintendo don't stoop to that level. Activision does, clearly. Yeah. Which EA is... does. Why not? <laughs> because Hell, Nintendo... Blizzard does. Because Nintendo are family friendly. <laughs> but anyway, hope you... anyway, that's it for this week, folks. Hope you enjoyed this video. As always, hit the thumbs up and if you want to be baptized and follow on this channel, hit the subscribe button down below. Click the bell to join the latest days here, so you don't miss anything I do on this channel. Uh, reaction on the left, podcast playlist on the right, The Apprentice is back, and we'll get everything wrong with The Apprentice out to, uh, on Saturday. Until then, enjoy the rest of your day, peace out, and as always, stay faithful.